Hello, Remton Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize. And the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon is growing all around the world. This is episode number 339. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm with my cohort in life and the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everybody. It's good to be here this morning. What a week we've had. Lots of stuff going on. Oh, I tell you what, they just want their war in the Ukraine. I don't, yep. they was, they've <laughs> even got a plan. It's to begin Wednesday, regardless of what Russia says. Well, and there's, there's some things that um, the Ukraine president has done. He's an, invited Biden to Ukraine to, in an effort to stop the escalation of the war talk. Um, and I don't think Biden is, has accepted uh, and also, I uh, heard that yesterday there was a report that uh, Ukraine had said that they were prepared to suspend their ambitions to join NATO. And boy, that's it. They're just all the people in the U.S., these, all these people that are warmongers are just pushing this thing to the limit. And, mm-hmm. you know, it, it makes you wonder why. And uh, I saw a report that Tulsi Gabbard did on Fox News. She's a former congresswoman, and she's a Democrat. But she says that they're fomenting war with Russia because they can't justify the money that the military-industrial complex wants to spend. And this is being pushed by some Republicans and Democrats alike. I mean, you've got these these people that are working with a satanic agenda on both sides. Oh, you do. And, and, you know, our representatives very seldom ever represent us. They represent the corporations where the real money comes from. And you want to you want to see corruption? You get somebody up there and just watch how their wealth increases after they're in office, and that just doesn't. We're not. I think it's two things. I think it's the military industrial complex, and why are they wanting to take Russia out? Russia has to been developing an alternative to the SWIFT system. That if it that if they can ever initiate that, that gives the, that takes away the stronghold on bank transfers from uh, the West and gives it to the East. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, Mary, it's amazing to me that uh, very seldom anymore are wars fought for righteous reasons. It's always about money, and it's about those who sit in boardrooms someplace planning these things that never, ever are involved in it. No, they don't suffer for it. They make money for it. Yep. It's, the, it's the troops. It's on both sides that suffer, the people of the nations involved. And, you know, the U.S. Uh, has sent a massive amount of weapons to the Ukraine in the last months. I can't remember how many um, billions of dollars have been sent there, like, even past six months ago. I mean, they've just been funneling it in. They're pushing this with everything they've got. Um, but I believe that we can plead the blood of Jesus over their words and their actions yes. that are provoking war. And we ask God for peace. We ask him to speak peace over this situation. It's not time for the end war. It's not time. There's too much to do in God's kingdom. There's too much he still wants done. And as his people, we can take authority and say, no, we forbid it in the name of Jesus. We forbid one more talking head to push this thing. And I'm just asking that the president of Russia and Ukraine and all of their their people will stand against this and do everything that they can to not push war. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think the president of Ukraine, maybe the lights are coming on, but uh, Putin not? Putin has already said this thing will go nuclear because there's no way that we can stand the combined troops of NATO. And he's looking at, my nation is going to end up being a crater. Well, well, we've got to pray for the people of, of Russia and Ukraine. I don't think either one of them would want war. No. Just like we don't want war. So let's continue to pray and ask for God, Father, for the sake of the souls to be saved in Russia and Ukraine and all of the the, uh, NATO countries that would be involved in this. Father, put a stay to it, we ask. Put a stay to this. Push it down the road um, so that your your work can be done. Father, it's not done yet. It's not time for an end. end And you want to to talk about a a, a reversal of roles. I guess it was about a year and a half ago in in a press conference, uh, Putin said that he saw Russia as the last bastion of Christianity on the Boy, planet. Now that is a reversal. Because, 
And he looked at all the crazy stuff that's coming out of the U.S. and said, okay, they, they had a president said they're no longer a Christian nation. And all the stuff that their government is pushing is not related to Christianity whatsoever. Can you imagine what they've thought as the word reached them about this uh, latest pick for the person that handles, I guess it's nuclear, nuclear waste. waste. And um, our friend Gordy and Tanya sent a, a several good news items to me, but one of them was it showed this man, he's a transgender, and it had people down on their knees that were acting like dogs that had like harnesses and stuff on them. And I thought, and a report can that he's into bestiality. Imagine yeah. what other nations would think that he's been chosen as, as a leader in this nation in a particular area. And oh. one, of the, one of the things I have seen since this current administration, and it, this tends here in the last decade or so with, with uh, the left, it's never about those that are the, best qualified for leadership it's always about optics whatever optics they want at the moment uh, whether it's you know putting in a supreme court justice or anything else it's about these crazy optics of things they have going on well in their heads. this optic would make most people barf yeah now the huge majority of of america even those that are are transgender and in these other lifestyles, this is the type of thing that would make us all barf. Yes. What this is, is to show the putrefaction of what has happened to the government of the United States. And and I think it's because they, they think, they are so convinced that after all these years that they can get anything done. This is what tickles me, guys, is we are seeing God reveal everything the hidden things, the things that nobody would believe. Would anybody have believed that there would be a person in that position that was like that several years ago? You just think, oh, no way. But God is revealing it all. And see, this is what they've done that they don't know. They, they've done their agendas all these years, all these people that have, these elites have done all this stuff and, and uh, done mind control and things, and they thought, oh, we've got it all, all in hand. There's nobody can stop us. Our agenda's unstoppable. They forgot about God. And what he's redoing is he, what God is doing is he is just continuing to reveal, 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 so that the people of this nation want to upcheck. To, to including the point, a lot on the left. Yeah. yeah. Even that, well, and this next, uh, um, you know, we got the thing going on at the Canadian border. And thank God there are people all over the, all over the nations, Mike that are raising up and saying we've had it with the mandates. And and if we will do it peacefully, they're trying to act like it's some big horrible thing, but that's not the truth. It's a lie. Let's just call it out what it is. They are lying to try to, to uh, get their agenda pushed like they always do. But thank God for people that are taking cell phone videos and things like that. That's one thing about the Internet and, and uh, these smartphones that are good is that you can show that they're lying. It is, and I think everybody needs to have a long memory when it comes time to vote. Mm-hmm. Uh, these these people, their agendas need to be shot down with with a with a with a vote stampede well, like they have never seen in the history of their nations. Unless there is corrupt elections in Canada, like well, they we've use, seen, they use the machines up there, so we know there's problems. Can you imagine though uh, that the people of Canada voting in Trudeau again? I mean, he's trying to strip money. They they had all that money that was GoFundMe for to help the truckers and they're they're blocking. I mean, this is it is so in your face wickedness and corruption on every turn. I I am excited. It, the worse this is looking, the more excited I'm getting because it's it's looking like to me, God is exposing everything and He doesn't do this for no reason. He doesn't expose everything for no reason. He's getting ready to judge it. And what he's doing is he's, he's given everyone a real clear delineation line. Before judgment hits, I mean big judgment on this wickedness, he's saying, get on the right side. Yeah. Don't, don't be over <clears throat> here with this bunch. You know, and I, I think that you know, I've been talking prophetically about the two bell curves that there's two bell curves going on right now, and I think it's in Canada and America both, and maybe in other nations, that um, God is allowing discomfort to knock people out of their techno sorcery coma that they're in, okay? Mm-hmm. And, you know, one of the things God keeps on asking me, he says, pray that the bell curve doesn't have to be huge. 
That's right. We and, can ask and, that it be limited. And because that people would wake up, but I think there's two different ones, Mary. I think there's going to be one for the remnant, and I think there's going to be one for patriots, whether they're Canadian patriots or American patriots or English patriots or whatever nation, that they're going to rise up and say, listen, this government does not represent us, and it had better change, and we're going to make sure that every vote is counted and only citizens are voting, mm -hmm. and that we're going to vote this junk out, and we're going to call these people out for the liars and deceivers that they are. Well, you know, the, the situation in Canada uh, is going to produce some problems because there's going to be shortages. I, they've talked about the auto industries kind of at a halt now because they don't have the parts. So there's going to be some problems. But we're all going to see it with the food shortages because of the distribution and things. But if but we, we can bear down and go through it, we've got to bear down and go through it because it has to happen. We've got to stand up against it. If we stand up against it, it buys us all more time to get things in order. Well, look at the hypocrisy of all this. They locked nations down, okay? And the only ones that were allowed to do anything were the truckers. And I remember, Mary, when, when they were first started doing that in the pandemic, they couldn't even find a place to get a meal because, no, because everything was shut down. They couldn't even walk through a drive through like at McDonald's. And so they were... They were having a hard time just finding food to eat as they were, you know, transporting the and, goods. And so these truckers paid a dear they price did pay a dear for price. trying to help this nation. And we need to back them up now. That's absolutely. And the government hasn't done it. Uh, they, it it's, because it's like, they're not going along with their agenda. They yeah. can't help somebody that's not flowing along with the little mind control mechanism. And it, what's, you know, we've we, we got to follow the science. Let me tell you something. The science they're using is the most fickle stuff. And we we got to we got to remember that there was one time the science said there was no such thing as psychosomatic illness. And the doctor that came up with that, Mary, they pushed him to the point of a nervous breakdown. Now they're saying that basically 60% uh, of all illness is psychosomatic. Basically, the way that you think and react to life can cause illness in your body. Uh, they, uh, they laughed at something called germs and that you had to wash your hands. All these different things. Science is constantly involving, but when it really goes off the rail, is when politics gets involved or those who hold the purse strings, which we have been happening since World War II in America, mm -hmm. those who control the purse strings control the outcome of the experiment before it's ever done. Well, you know, one of the things that I think we need to pass on to those around us is if there's someone that says, you know, oh, you just need to get the vaccination, just get rid of this thing, we need to have uh, some names like Dr. McCullough, Dr. Malone, some names to give them and say, would you just get on the Internet and just research them? You know, there was, I can't remember her name, but there was a, a doctor um, very professional, very well-educated, went before Congress to talk to them about, you know, the truth of all this stuff. And um, if they could just listen to that, you know, we need to have some names <clears throat> or some things for them to look up on the Internet to just get a different point of view other than the mainstream media, because that's what most people watch. Which is propaganda anymore, has been since the 20th century. And, and it, it has um, a sorcery type effect. There, there is witchcraft behind it, and it is it goes across to make you accept it as fact. I mean, they've tapped into everything uh, that they could tap into to try to get this agenda done. Um, but well, we, we're, let's keep on praying, praying for Canada, praying for the strength for these people that are protesting all across the world. Let's do whatever we can in a peaceful way to support this. Because if we start standing up, they'll get in fear. See, they, they don't know fear because they have no fear of God. They've always got their stuff done. They've always had this huge uh, demonic backing. So they've not known fear. Yeah. What they need is a good <clears throat> dose of fear. You know why? Because it'll, it'll make a mess up. The only thing they fear is daylight. That everything well, they've done is brought into the daylight. They they're messing with the God that created daylight. Absolutely, and he can he can cause graves to come open. He can cause, um, you know, evidence to fall into hands. He could he could take evidence with take an angel and bring evidence and put it in somebody's hands. I remember years ago that God you know gave us the prayer let everything hidden be revealed, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the the state troopers were like bloodhounds hunting down. Uh, semis full of drugs coming up I-44 and stuff. And it was just phenomenal because we yeah. found that the uh, cartels will hire witch doctors to uh, cloak their shipments by magic. Well, and they keep 
they keep the witches on like I-44. There are towns along I-44, and they go the back roads, and, and they follow these lines of cloaking. So, man, when, that, when we started praying that, everything started falling apart. Um, and so prayer works, guys, and, and we're just going to keep yeah. uh, declaring how great our God is until this thing falls all to pieces. He's going to do what he told me he's going to do. He's going to take this nation back. And their, their plans are going to be strewn out before them where, where they've never been before. Another interesting thing um, that some, uh, somebody sent me was a, a report that China has released another bioweapon at the Olympics. Now, this is, is not past my imagination that they would do this. No. And it's a perfect scenario because you've got all of the demonic power built by the pagan aspects of the Olympics. Well, I, I gave, um, I remember back when this whole thing first happened in Wuhan, that there was a military commander come out. He was in the military intelligence community. And he said, listen, we were, we were doing joint drills with all these different nations in China. And uh, we believe that they released it on our guys back then. And so they, 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 it's, it's, it's easy convenience. Everybody comes to you and you begin releasing it. Well, and I think, um, I think what, what we can do to break the power of this, the, the demonic power, is, Father, we ask forgiveness for the sins of every pagan thing that was done at the Olympics, from the lighting of the torch to everything they do, Father, that is straight from paganism. We ask forgiveness for those sins. We ask that your mercy would cover it, over every person that's that's there, that they would not pack out any bioweapon and take it back to the nations. Father, put a block to it. We forbid it. We forbid another spreading of a bioweapon. And we ask that you would just wash that place clean, wash every person clean by your great power before they get on those planes to come back here and to uh, every other nation that they're going to. And we just ask you to do a mighty work there in Jesus' name. Mike, another thing that... Uh, was broke over the weekend is the John Durham investigation. You know, he's had this ongoing investigation on FBI's role in the hack 2016 election. And they've come out in the report and said Hillary's campaign did spy on the campaign and that they, the Clintons, had paid someone to infiltrate Trump Towers servers and the White House servers, including the office of the president, to link Trump to Russia. <laughs> and this can even extend to Obama and a whole lot of people. But now I want you to look at this. See, with God, there's no place to hide. No, there's not. And it looks like Hillary just gets away with everything and everything. And I'm sure every program multiple that's ever been a victim of any of those people just thinks, no justice. You're getting ready to see some justice. Because if they don't get her here, <coughs> God will bring something else out. And he'll bring something else out. There is no place to hide. There, and I think there's a tipping point that for the left, that you become, you're more trouble than you're worth. And that's when they just pull the plug and just let the bathtub drain. And I mm -hmm. think they're about ready to do that with her. Well, Hillary's got to the age that there are so many younger, powerful witches around that, you know, she's probably, well, it's, it's been a long time ago. God told me she'd peaked, the, uh, peaked her power. And so that she'd be on a downturn, and she has been ever since. I mean, she's not gonna she's not gonna make a rising up again. Um, so let's just continue to pray, Father, that that every person, everything that's revealed in this, have them follow the trail back to everyone involved, so that no one escapes justice. In Jesus' name, I've just I've been encouraged this week because every, you know every time I've I've went to prayer, um, what God was telling me is there is an unending amount of anything that his people need. And that's that's a stark comparison to the old kingdom of darkness. Not only is there limited things that the kingdom of darkness can do and produce, but it's all hatred and evil. Yeah, and it requires blood, sweat, and tears and all kinds of other stuff. To The, 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 the darkness never gives you what it doesn't extract two or threefold yeah. in, from your life. And, you know, it's it's. I've always said for all these years, <clears throat> it's, we're coming out of Babylon, we're coming out of Egypt. And when they came out of Egypt... Look how long they had to wander around the wilderness trying to tap in, into God's power. They finally found, you know, the crew, Joshua and Caleb and the younger bunch to go into the promised land and take it. But that's we're in a similar situation. We're in a similar situation where God's raising up 
mighty men of valor, mighty women of valor that will stand and in position and say, we're not taking this anymore. We're taking this land for Jesus. God's coming back in the nation, and you're not going to stop it in Jesus' name. I tell you what, Caleb's an inspiration for me because by the time, you know, the first time that he said, let's go over, this, this is no problem, he was 40. And so by the time we get to Deuteronomy, he's 80 years old, Mary. And you read some really interesting things when you get into that, into Joshua. He, uh, he tells the youngins, he said, listen, I'm going after those giants, okay? That, that's my area over there, and it's on a mountain. You boys get back because I'm getting ready to show you something really special. 80 years old, Mary, mm-hmm. going after giants. We think it's all over for us at 80 and just getting started. Mm. See, well, there's, there's a fresh anointing coming. There is, and I'm telling you, part of it is we've got to get the right perspective of our God. Yes, right. And there is an unending flow of whatever we need. If he if we need to have our needs provided for, unending flow available. Yeah, unending so, flow. You know one of the one of the neatest things that uh, years ago when I was trying to understand our Hebraic heritage and stuff, I read from a rabbi's rabbi's point of view the the seven days of creation. And he said, he goes, This is how great the Almighty is that when he was creating in those six days, he created everything that could ever be created. Mm-hmm to include every answer to every prayer that would ever be uttered by those in covenant with him. So the Almighty, from that sixth day after he rested, he would never have to create a thing. He simply it's already releases there. it. It's already there. And it, isn't that what we always talk yeah. about? Something needs to be released yep. from heaven? That's right. And, and God's in the, God is getting ready to it's release a lot ready of things. ready to flow like nothing anybody's yes. ever seen. Because all God needs is some people to stand up. He needs people to stand up against evil and say, I don't care what it costs. I'm not backing down. I'm not retreating. I'm going forward. And I'm not the one going to lose this battle. Jesus has already given us the victory. And that's what we do. If we need healing, when they came out of Egypt, there were no sick among them. Is God's hand shortened since then? No. He can he could heal anything. He can he can restore the bodies of those that is these of that have had vaccines. Absolutely. He can. He can cause the bodies to uh, reject the graphene and, and work it out of their system. Work it out, just like he had that stuff come out of us when we were poisoned that time. Yeah. He can restore whatever it tears down, he can restore. Our God is he is still El Shaddai. Yeah. He is always more than enough. That's right. Um he, he protects us. Man, have we experienced that. In Psalm 32, 7, it's in, uh, this is the New King James Version. It says, You are my hiding place, and you shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. He's still singing songs of deliverance over us. Now, let's, let's just stop and talk about that for a minute. We always talk about you know, all the times that we sing to God and praise and worship. You know those are seeds being sown. And what's interesting, there's a story in the book of Acts that Paul and Silas were beaten, they were thrown into prison, and they started singing. Mm -hmm. But you see, the other equation is the jail rocking from one end to the other was God singing songs of deliverance over them. That's right. That's right. Shook that place. Shook it. Just like he shook it when when Jesus died. And then show me an earthquake that can make chains and shackles come open. I'm telling you. It was songs of deliverance that Almighty God was singing over Paul and Silas. Well, I've heard so many people, victims of mind control lately, that are, are just really having such a hard time. They're, they're having a hard time maintaining their will to live even. And so I'm going to just say some prayers as we go through here. Um, and, Father, I'm asking you to surround every part of every victim with songs of deliverance. And I declare that you, with you all things are possible. I ask you to nullify all backup programming and show those handlers your power to tear down anything they built in Jesus' name. No weapon formed against your little ones shall prosper. And I command those things that the handlers have built, that programmers have built, to fall to pieces. God, you are able to do anything. It shouldn't take 10 years. It shouldn't take 20 years to get somebody free from what these horrible, evil people did. And I believe, Father, that you are bringing an anointing <coughs> to just bring restoration in such a way that it doesn't take that long. I know it's possible, Father. I, was, I had another couple of um, scriptures that I wanted to talk about, just showing the, um, 
that God brings life. You know, if if the enemy's trying to just get you to give up and just give up on life and you know, if you don't can't find joy and you're just struggling all the time, it's hard, Mike. It is. But in the uh, uh John four fourteen it says, uh, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. See, there's there's an anointing. If you if you have ex- accepted Jesus as your Savior, and he, he is ruling and reigning in your life, you have access to a well of living water that can wash away pain, that can restore, can refresh. That And it's unending. Is that not a good thing to know? Oh, yeah. That it's unending. In Isaiah 44, 3, it says, For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thine offspring. That's a scripture every one of us ought to hold on to every day because Satan's after our kids. Well, guess what? You can't have them. No. You can't have our children, our grandchildren, in the name of Jesus. We forbid it. We command every evil spirit you back off of them. Jesus has already defeated you. We stand in that victory and say, you bow your knee. You're not having our children. You're not having our grandchildren. And that settles it in Jesus' name. And no matter how far you press them in, all you've done is create a greater testimony when Jesus sets them free. That's right. And boy, are they going to be on fire for Jesus. You know, there's when we're talking about water, when much of the Word of God was, was written uh, from an agricultural point of view, you know, having a river uh, meant life. When you look at ancient Egypt, ancient, one of the reasons that Egypt prospered is the Nile. And, they, and, and irrigation was, was very, very um, easy that in the flooding times it would flood out and it would, that would basically fertilize the soil. Mm-hmm. And many times they could, with their foot, just create this little dam and just push it away with the foot to, to irrigate. I mean, it was, it was easy. Uh, and you, same thing with rivers of life and, and wells and stuff. It's all throughout the Word of God. Well, when the Word of God reveals to us the throne of God, there's a river flowing from it. Okay. The day that you got born again, the day that you bowed the knee to Jesus and said, I need a Savior, please come into my life, forgive me of my sins, I I yield to you that you are Yahweh Elohim come in the flesh. You gave your life for me on the cross. You rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave three days later. That moment, your spirit man was reconnected to the throne of God. Okay? Now, for just us messed up folks or even... Uh, let's say someone that has had mind control done. Do you know what that's done? Do you ever see when you know the enemy thought that they had this bomb that was going to be set off and everything, and there was no way to stop it, and somebody did a workaround, they did a patch, they did they did something that bypassed what the enemy had done. That's exactly what God did when He saved you and connected your spirit mm-hmm. to the throne of God. Just bypassed your soul. It bypassed. And what God is calling us to do right now is to live by the Spirit. We don't live by our souls. We live by our spirits. And we begin living by our spirits. The Holy Spirit will begin working and diffusing everything the enemy has put within our souls. And that's exactly what I wanted to talk to you. I'm glad you said that because, um, you know, with victims of mind control, um, they, they can have things built internally that can keep parts of their mind, parts of their soul trapped. I've heard of um, hell being placed in the programming, and that and that's a place of torture for a part. And this is all for manipulation to get that part to where to be used or to hinder what that person's supposed to do. You know, the your front consciousness is not going to realize you've got a place built internally that where you're being tortured. The front part would just feel the effects of that. You just feel hopeless and and in pain all the time, and just um, it would just be horrible, and you wouldn't even know where it's coming from. Uh, I've heard that they can put a grave in there, and and you can be in a coffin. I mean, there's all kinds of things that they can do. Now, here's um, this is the way I believe that they that they have stifled those that are Christians that have a saved spirit, but they. They haven't got that victory through to every part of their soul. It's because I think 
they try to disconnect you from your spirit. Mm-hmm. I think they, they have found ways to, to form places in your mind where it's, it's petitioned off, so to speak. Because see, if, if this flow from the kingdom is allowed to just go unhindered, you'd be one upright, powerful, walking person. And they can't have that, can they? Not only can they not have it in the victims of mind control, Mike, but they've done this with TV. Oh, yeah. They've done this with, with games, video games. They have found out through the visual way of doing this that when you look at some, something and are involved in it, especially if there's emotion involved and they can get everything they need, it's, it's almost like a, a, you know, one of these big cauldrons where they get all the things in there that they need to, to get a spell. They've perfected this to where I believe that you don't even have to have had trauma to have places in your mind prepared. Oh, absolutely. And I, I think that it's reinforced every time you would watch that same thing. That's or, why. That's or why spend people hours playing that video game of right, fantasy over and over. I think that I think that this people could have things in their mind, have things ex- experiences in their front consciousness, and they don't have a clue where it's coming from. How many people are on drugs for depression? How many people are on drugs for aggressive behavior? rage all kinds of things are going on and if you'd ask that person well where's this coming from i don't know i don't know why i feel this way it's just there so in my opinion we can say some prayers to not only help programmed victims but just people that have are just struggling christians that are struggling and can't get past things it's because there's something been built by the enemy something's been done by the enemy to block the flow of the kingdom internally. Yeah. Because if we, you know, that's that's why like some of these old men that were such great pre- preachers and we just heard amazing stories about like healings and things like that, they didn't have a block. That's right. They didn't have a block. It was flowing from their safe spirit into every part of their soul, into their mind, their will, their emotions. There was no hindrances. And so you just had a, a mighty a man of God that God could just pour through. But that's what the enemy's done, I believe. And it's a perfect strategy. Wouldn't you want to to block up the flow? And they've figured out how to do it with our minds by what we watch through the the frequencies of what we're hearing. Um, you know, there's so many things that are dangerous about, about uh, cell phones and smartphones. I know that God can use them. I know that it's a great way to get information around. Well, there's a lot of programs in there just for addiction. Well, and that's that's what them. I am seeing. I think people get addicted to it, and I think you just watch it and watch it and watch it, and it's be, it it's just funneling back something to defeat you. Yeah, uh, the hours and hours and hours yeah, that you waste. I think they're using it, and so um, you know, one of the things too, you know, you you talked about you know putting them in in rooms or hells or coffins. And one of the things we've seen on the flip side, let's say you had somebody that was programmed that was given an assignment, and let's say they accomplished it. They'll still leave them living in squalor, but what they'll do is on the inside of them, they'll create a reality. Let's say they're driving a Lex and, and they have all this money and stuff, but Mary, it's nothing. It's just it's just made up in their head, and that's mm-hmm. their reward. Yeah. You want to talk about a bunch of cheapskates. When when God blesses you, it's real. Yeah, there, there's an unending flow to his blessings. It, it, it's real. It's tangible. Yeah, and he'll give you what you can handle, you know, that's like right. he just— It'll funnel through when you can handle it, and that's I don't want any more than we can handle. I, <laughs> I mean, want. I, I feel. Want I feel what? like we got as, as, as far as tasks right now. I think we got we got more than enough, baby. Well, but I His wanted, grace is sufficient. I wanted to, as I go down through this, I thought I wanted us to speak some truth that will tear down lies. Now, where they have put internal hell into people, and I believe this is not just program multiples. I believe that they're they have put prisons on the inside of many christians yeah and so we're going to speak the truth of god's word over that that jesus rose victorious over death hell and the grave hell can't hold you the word says oh grave where's your sting the grave can't hold you and i command those things to open up to let every part of your brain go I bind up evil spirits that are served, serving as gatekeepers to keep the flow of the Holy Spirit out of there. 
And so what you, as we read this, as we go through some things, if you're a programmed multiple, it's going to be a little bit different. And let me tell you why. Because you've had traumatic memories are in front of the places in your mind that will not allow access. And they've done this on purpose. What a, this, and think about, about the conniving of this. There's something in there that needs to get accessed by the power of God so you can be delivered and healed. So they always put the traumatic memory in front of it. You know why? Because your own mind is convinced that you won't survive living through that again. So your own mind can block it, and you can have a personal gatekeeper. Now, you can also have evil spirits that serve as that. Mm -hmm. But here's the truth. They They can't keep you captive anymore. You're not a little child. The fear of that little child isn't there. It, you're an adult now. And that's how I, I help myself get healed. Is when that unbelievable fear of, of the trauma would come up, I'd say, you know what? I'm not a little girl anymore. You can't do this to me anymore. And I would override it with the truth. That your, your heart rate can normalize. You can breathe normally. You're not going to go into cardiac arrest. You're not going to lose your mind. You're going to come out of this unreality. And yeah. I pray, if, if, you, if you feel comfortable with this, the way that you can pray this down is you, is you ask Almighty God to do a system override. You make a conscious decision and then allow God to do a system override and break the power of any gates, any locks, any prison doors, and flood those areas with the anointing that destroys every yoke of bondage and set you free and put you in a place internally, whatever <clears throat> part's been trapped there, a place of learning, a place to learn the truth of who God is, of his word. And here's another reality. The Holy Spirit does not want you to relive that moment. No. He wants to wash it away. hmm why, why would he want us to relive things over and over? If you can get your front yeah. consciousness to get a grip on this, your healing can go so much faster because you have authority to bind any evil spirits that are gatekeepers, and I'll do that right now. Any evil spirits that's been set as a gatekeeper in a mind control victim or just any other Christian, any evil spirits have been set as a gatekeeper over a prison over over any uh, walled off area i bind you in the name of jesus how dare you defile the house of the living god and i ask god to judge you i ask god to to break all power and to remove you from any person that you've affected in jesus name and then you can just you can ask god you can do a system override of your own personal internal mind you can make a conscious decision and say I want an override, Almighty God. I want an override of anything that's been done through uh, lies. And I want, I want you to go through the gates. I want you to go through the doors. I want you to invade every place in me, every hidden place, everything that the enemies put there that I didn't know was there. Break down the doors, Almighty God. I give you permission to go into every part of my mind, every part of my soul, and set me free. In Jesus' name. No. Jesus didn't hurt you. No. If you believe that Jesus was the one that hurt you, that was a lie. That was an imposter. The real Jesus, the only begotten Son of God, would never hurt you. He died so you wouldn't hurt. That's right. He would never hurt you. You were lied to. You can trust the real God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You can trust his real Son. Everything else was a strategy to get you to stay in prison, but you don't have to stay there because God's yeah. love for you is greater than anything the enemy's done. And, and there know, is nothing that you've done that Jesus had, hasn't paid the price for you to be free. That's right. I don't care even if you have been stuck on pornography. If, that, if you don't think that forms a prison in your mind, that's exactly what that does. Through a visual means, they have perfected how to build a, an internal world where you're trapped in it and you can't get out. And that, and that is hooked to every base emotion you have and drives you to go look at that stuff to reinforce what's in there. Well, we ask God to judge it. Yeah. Every evil spirit. 
And we Every break, evil spirit. And that, we break the addiction of it yes. because it's just as addictive as cocaine or it heroin is. or crack. And we plead the blood of Jesus right now. Yes. And you just come into agreement with us. If you're hooked on pornography, if you can't get away yes. from, from these things, let, do a system override, Father God. Yes. They, they may have built something. But, Father, set you can tear that thing down around Jesus. them and keep that part safe and, and, and set them free in their mind. Yes. In the name of Jesus, we just speak a sanctification flow. We just plead the blood of Jesus that is going to wash away Let anything that the enemy, it, enemy has done. And I'm asking, Father, instead, you loosen anointing to make them a preacher against it. Yes. Father, put such a hatred for them of that in there that they would, that they would be a mighty person in your kingdom to lead others out of it yes we just command those doors to come open and every screen every screen that's been built in there that is constantly running that stuff we just command you to go down in the name of jesus father make the make the demonic lights go out tear those screens out of there father and just fill it up with the holy spirit set people free father it's time for your children to be set free from these prisons it's time for them for them to be taken out of what the enemy has built. You know, this is a time of exposing, tearing down, so there can be some, some building of good things. And that's not only going to be in the natural, because that's got to happen in the natural. we got to get rid of the pagan stuff. But he can do that internally. Just, just think of this. You know, and I've thought about this because I let my kids watch it. Um, I let my kids watch all the Disney stuff. I thought those were good things. When, when they were little, um, obviously my discernment wasn't working at all. And uh, I was thinking about that Little Mermaid movie that Disney has. And think about that if you watch that and that's internalized. You know, we could sing every one of those songs. It, it was just like it could play in our head. Um, and so in that internal world that you would have created in your mind, you would have that big Ursula. Remember that big wicked witch that was in there and had was uh, had black tentacles like an octopus, but then she was human looking from the waist up. And th- what that would be is a representation of a horrible water spirit. So can you imagine internally what that would do? It doesn't mean you're possessed. It means that you have a tentacle in you from some spirit that has access to you and can manipulate and work. and You see what I'm saying? And people would say, oh, Mary, that can't be. You don't know what all they, they're capable of. That's right. Why do you think they're so arrogant? They have had people walking around like puppets for years. They showed me years ago. Years ago, they showed me what they could do, and it is unbelievable. It is unbelievable what they can do with the average person walking down the, the street. It's far more advanced than what anybody knows. It's far more advanced than what you've heard. And so just think about this. If you will view things as, go back in your life, it, you know, if, if you're a victim of mind control, you know that they've, they've messed with your head. And that, that, but keep this in mind. God's plenty big enough to undo this. He's plenty big enough. Used to, when they would, when I would read things and it was so discouraging and overwhelming and I would hear uh, people at conferences say, well, you're lucky if it takes 10 years and maybe 20 to get somebody out of this, I would have such righteous indignation rise up in me and I'd think, don't you tell me my God's little. That's making him look small. Because the truth of it is, if the anointing got to flow like it's supposed to through us, it could straighten out every bent place. That's right. Those demons would flee and, and shriek and leave, and then we would, we would have a restoration process. It's not overnight. It, you have to deal with on a daily basis. You have to do a lot of prayer. But well, it, I think but that's, it's, that's one of the reasons God had you do all those uh, MP3s, audios that you did, or everything that you've learned about how you came out so that people can listen to them over and over again and get them down into their spirits. Well, I recently got an email from somebody that said they'd listened to him and they'd went back and listened to him and couldn't believe what they'd, you know, like if, if you're a victim of mind control, your mind's going to work against you because now, now this is the, this is the number one thing that you have to, to get over. You have authority over any demon, over any evil spirit that's attached to you or whatever. You got authority over them if you're a Christian. That's it. You can make them bow the knee to Jesus and break their power. 
And that's the truth. Mm -hmm. The problem is getting your mind to understand what was a lie and what's truth. Because everything they saw, if you're a victim of mind control, leads those parts that saw it to believe God's not powerful or, or he doesn't love you. Or some other lie that they can use to control right. you. Right. And, and those lies make your <clears throat> mind not give access to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will not invade where they're not welcome. But if you, you know, what I did originally is I did that system override thing. I said, I'll tell you what, God. I don't know. I can't remember everything they did. I remember some, but I can't remember everything. But I'll tell you what. Almighty God, blow the gates. Blow them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> get every gate open. Get every prison open. Every place I'm trapped. Everything internal or if there's some place external, like, it, like dimensional or anything I don't know about. Blow the gates. And get me out of there and replace what's there with a place where you can reside. And, and I just keep hitting it, and I keep hitting it, and I'd say day after day, God, you're bigger than this. You are so much bigger than what they've done. You're bigger than all of these evil people put together, and all of their money, and all of their power. And he, he proved himself big enough to stop a plane coming at my house, and that was pretty much convincing to every part of me. Yeah, he is bigger. He's yeah. bigger. Yes, he is. He can stop an army. He can stop assassins. He can do anything. And that's what you've got to, got to meditate on and, and get down in your soul because those truths can set you free. And I'm not saying that I know everything about mind control or all the things that have been done to people. I don't. And I'm not saying that there is, is not a, a great value to a Christian counselor that understands this and can help people through it. And especially if they have been on medications and stuff, you got to have help. But I'm just saying there's some basic truths here that not only for mind control victims, but for any Christian walking that is, is having such a hard time they don't even want to live. That's not God's <clears throat> will. No, because I can tell you with everything we've went through, and my youngest daughter still still in a place that's, that's not a good place, with everything I've seen, I still got joy. I still got joy that my God's bigger. I got joy that I've got hope that he's going to bring these little babies that have been human trafficked out of here. I've got hope that he's going to take the most programmed person in the world and restore them. I've got hope that he's going to take a nation that has been so defiled that it's by the grace of God we are not on fire. But yes. he can turn it around. He can raise up people that will stand up with the bravery of these truckers that are standing. That's he right. can raise up people that are, are standing up in the face of, of going to prison. And these doctors that are losing their going to lose their license, the, the risk for of their— For all simply telling the truth. For telling the truth. Well, I say rise up, O God of truth. Rise up, O God of truth, and defend your people. Make it so apparent that they're not going to make one more move forward that it scares them to the place they fall on their knees and cry out to you for mercy. Yes, Father. Show your power, Lord. And Father, set your people free. You are great enough to do it in ways we couldn't even understand. Yeah. As we declare your truth, we believe that you're going to do it. Now, Father, for all the those that are mono-minded that have not had uh, these things done to them, Father, what the enemy loves to do is he loves to put things in us to stop up the flow of your spirit. Uh, it can be sins that we have forgotten. Uh, it, it can be a lot of things. And, Father, I ask right now that the Holy Spirit would go to work on us. And, Father, that we would fight from the inside going out and that the Holy Spirit would fight from the outside going in. And, Father, remove out of our lives anything that will hinder the full flow of the river of God through us for those around us. Jesus said that if we believed in him, out of our bellies would flow rivers, multiple rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. And, Father, there are rivers of grace. There are rivers of mercy. There are rivers of healing. Yes. There are rivers of restoration. There are mm -hmm. rivers of revival. Yes. There are rivers of, of even restitution, Father God. Yes. Of giving back what the canker worm and the locust has eaten. Father, take those the drug money and the human trafficking money and drop it into the hands of those, those that will build your kingdom and yes, restore Father. these victims. Yes, Father. Father, turn this thing around. You are the way maker. Mm -hmm. Father, you are the one who can stop the earth from turning if you want to, that you can stop an army, you can send one angel and wipe out an army. And, Father, we ask today that for your people, for your remnant, anywhere in the world, Father, and there are many under persecution today, 
Father, I ask that you would release legions of angels Mm -hmm. to fight for your people so that we can preach the gospel and show miracles, signs, and wonders that testify that Jesus is Lord and that he is king and that he is coming back to rule and to reign. In Jesus' name. Hi, everybody. I'm Mike Kerr, co-founder of Hear the Watchman. And I'd like to join in with Dr. Michael Lake in inviting you to come out to Grapevine, Texas, March 17th through the 20th, for our Eyes to See conference. It is the first time that we've been able to gather together again and worship and learn and just be blessed by the speakers who are, who are going to be there to share with you. Those would be none other than Dr. Michael Lake, Jamie Walden, Pastor Paul Bagley, Derek Gilbert, L.A. Marzulli, Dr. Michael Lake, Dave Hodges, Thomas Dunn, Coach Dave Dobbenmeyer, Ohio Brett, John and Chelsea Jubilee, and yours truly, Mike and Jeannie Kerr. So get out and get involved. Come out and let's gather again in fellowship and pray together. There's nothing like it please go to www.hearthewatchmenmen.com and sign up today. We have discounted hotel rooms available. It's just a wonderful experience. And use the promotional code LAKE20 and save $20 off the price of your ticket to attend the conference. We'll see you all in Grapevine, Texas. Thank you so much, and God bless each and every one of you.